Hi, welcome to I've Tried to Eat My Phone. I am Karen Jaworski, and I am joined by my cousin Ryan today, who uh, is joining us from Houston area, Texas. Houston. <laughs> you do say the H? Oh, yeah. Okay. Houston, Texas. Okay. I just Maybe want to make sure because I've heard a lot of people say Houston. Well, those people are not from Texas. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> um, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Houstoning wrong. Sorry. <laughs> we are going to talk about music today. And I want to know uh, first question is Do you have a CD? Um, which, you know, old school. Go to old yeah, school. I'm going old school. Okay. Do you have a CD that you're mildly embarrassed to own? Just one? <laughs> <laughs> you can name a few. <laughs> uh, actually, it'd probably be more cassette tapes. Oh, uh, going way in the Wayback Machine. <laughs> the Wayback. Like, <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm trying to think right off the top of my head. Who would it be? Man, you stumped me. See, you got me completely out of the blue. Okay. I don't know. Uh, or what, what's your kind of guilty pleasure to listen to? Uh, sometimes I like to listen to like Erasure. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to listen to that. But then uh what's I don't know. I can, it, it it depends. There's so many genres, right? So yeah. with all the different genres, it, it really um it's hard to nail something down. But like okay. My my one. This is probably my my jam. I'm gonna go ahead and Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the Bee Gees. Yeah, I would say the yes. Bee Gees. That's that moment like you just can't help but not tap your foot to that, right? No, I when I was moving from Seattle or Chicago to Seattle, I yeah. was driving my parents' van with all of my stuff in it from my apartment in Chicago. And I went through, my dad had a big thing of like CDs in there. And there was like a Bee Gees Greatest Hits. Wow. <laughs> and I put it on and I had the absolute best time like listening to, they're so good. I, there's a reason that they're popular, you know, yeah. they're so good. But uh, <laughs> John always gets frustrated with me because one of my favorite Saturday Night Live skits is when Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake do the very good very talk good. Show, <laughs> show or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking it up. Yeah. And, but I was like, the lights on Broadway, that's a great song. Like it's, yeah. it's they're, they're good. It's, it's fun to listen to it. You can't help but be happy. I know, right? Listening to the BGs. Even How Can You Mend a Broken Heart, like, is a great song where you're just like, oh, yeah, that's good. So I love that. <laughs> Isn't it interesting, though? Like, one of the things I love so much about music is just, um, it's like, it's almost like teleportation, you know? Like, you, it, if you play a certain song, it's going to conjure up a memory, you know, like the first time you heard it or like you remember hearing it. So, you know, there's certain songs where it's just like that nostalgia kicks in and you're like, man, oh, that was such a good song. And um, I think I think we in our generation, I think this is my personal. The following is not a real actual thing. This is just Ryan's opinion. <laughs> so um, but basically, uh, you know, we got to we were in this great era of like you know 70s and, and 80s and all that kind of stuff and, and you know the tail end of the 60s was still being played as like a hot recurrent mm -hmm. when we were young and everything so i think back then it was like people were really 
like music was a passion. It was like something that was in people that they had to get out. And I think now that we've got, it's become so commercialized and it's like, if it doesn't sound like this, you're not going to get airtime, you know? Mm -hmm. So like when I turn on pop radio now, I'm like, oh, is that Christina Aguilera? Or is that, you know, like other than hearing a little nuance in the voice, but like, who is that? Is that Christina Aguilera? Is that, is that, um, not, well, maybe not Shakira, but you know, it, it just has like that feel, that mm -hmm. format. You're just like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, okay, it's catchy, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah. So listen, okay, now I'm thinking it's my my guilty pleasure is some some Taylor Swift song about like you see me in the dress and in this yes that's going down or whatever, and I'm like, <laughs> why am I singing this song like I'm a girl? <laughs> I need I need Bridget and John in here. Bridget and John are uh, big fans of Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. That's that's their guilty pleasure thing is they watch her. They watch both of their videos on YouTube all the time. And like, that's kind of their that's their deal together. They love doing that. So <laughs> I, I listen, but I'm like, okay, that's catchy. Yeah, but like, yeah, but the two of them, that's kind of their vibe. So let me ask you this question. Do you, what was, what do you remember as your first album? Or could you have a memory of like, hey, this is the first record I bought with my own money or something like that? Mm. Do you have any memories of that? Yeah, so, um, I would say, well, I think, and actually this is, this is funny to bring up because this came up when we were together. Um, one of the first albums I bought like on a, I don't know if it was on a CD or a cassette. I have to think about that, but was Nirvana's Nevermind. Uh -huh. uh, and I had it and I, I think I, we were at Grandpa Frank's funeral. <laughs> okay. Do you remember this? Vaguely. I mean, I remember his funeral. Okay. And we, we went, we had to go, I don't know, someone asked us to get something or wherever we, we to, had to we go. to the store to get like ice or something at the little yes. community, right? Okay. Yeah. And we got in the car and I had that playing and you were like look at my cousin listening to like nirvana like you were like astonished that that was like but that was i mean that was such a quintessential album of that time because that was what did he die in 90, 91 90, yeah. yeah yeah valentine's, valentine's day. day yeah, yeah. 91 92 right in there somewhere. yeah and but anyway that was such a huge album then and um that was a big deal i think before that i had maybe six, some cassettes oh um uh was it uh phil collins no jacket required oh yeah i think that was one of the first cassettes that i ever bought like that was a big deal that was a great album um, and, and, um, that and Billy, Billy Joel, um, yeah. I forget what his first album was or one of the, one of the ones that I bought initially, but th those were, those were big. How about you? So my first single that I can remember, so this is a 45 single was <laughs> Sick, Come Sail Away. And no, wait, no, wait a minute. I'm really good at jogging memory because I remember playing it. And I had, remember the Fisher Price record player? Yeah. So I had the Fisher Price record player at Grandma Dot's and it was the, the 45 was actually broken on one side. Like you could literally <laughs> like make it jump up like this and I'd have to snap it back in together. And it, it, amazingly, it wouldn't skip, but I would play it on that Fisher Price <laughs> record player. <laughs> like, so that was my first one that I remember. So I, I I, that probably came out in what, like 70, I'm probably like five or six years old when that came out. Yeah. So then the other one was, that, that I actually bought with my own money that I saved up was Journey Escape. I bought the whole 12 inch. Wow. And that was, wow. I mean, that, that one is just, I mean, that is quintessential. It's a great album. Yeah, it's awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah. Um, um, 
Did you, uh, what, what was the, what are like in terms of concerts, like I know we kind of talked about this previously a little bit, but uh, tell me about concerts that you went to. Cause I was thinking like, you know, there, um, uh, like mem memorable ones. It doesn't have to be your first one, but like memorable well, ones. The first concert that I remember was I was actually taken to a concert by my parents and it was Wham. Are yes. you serious? Yes, it was Wham. <laughs> where, where did you see Wham? They were there. They're, so in Houston, you know, like they have uh, Six Flags Great America. Well, in Texas, there's yeah. one Astro World. Um, and they had an outdoor concert venue called uh, Southern Star Amphitheater. And so it was like just a big concert and it was up on a hill. Like the, the audience, literally you brought a blanket and you sat on the grass. So there were no actual seats. And uh, so we went there and saw that. Um, I didn't really make it to a lot of other um, concerts. I wasn't much of a concert goer. Yeah. I think I could go see Erasure. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I don't, uh, wasn't much you know my problem is i'm such an audiophile that i get used to the way i hear it on the album that when i hear it live and they change something i'm like oh yeah you're doing it wrong <laughs> why are you doing it like that that's not right <laughs> yeah i no i totally get that where i think um david spade does a thing about like i forget what band where he's like you didn't play the one song that like everybody knows you for like yeah like, you have to play your entire old album like nobody knows yeah. you, you have gotta, and now for something new and everyone's like i got i'm gonna go to the bathroom like yeah again <laughs> yeah <laughs> my my mom and i went and saw um whitney houston Oh, wow. At the Breslin Center, which is where Michigan State plays basketball um, one time. And um, I'm so glad I saw her because she she was amazing. I mean, but it was the I'm Your Baby Tonight tour. And we had, I think we bought buttons or magnets commemorating the time. Very nice. But, <laughs> everyone needs but that, was, that was really fun. Like it was such a like fun moment because my mom was always, she had the original Whitney Houston record album um, on our record player and we used to listen to it all the time. And so it was a big deal for her to go to that. She was, she was really excited, but pumped, that, yeah. that was a very memorable concert <laughs> to go to with her. But um, do you think that uh, ha like with COVID, I mean, obviously concerts, yeah. m music is taking on a new kind of motion a little bit. Like people are on YouTube and they're doing collaborations and they're, I, th I think there's some cool creativity going on yeah. um, with that. What, ha what have you seen lately that you really like? Like what, what appeals to you these days, music wise? I don't know. I think that's the thing is like, as I was kind of thinking about what to talk about and, you know, I've got a couple audio clips here that I was going to kind of run over, Yeah. you know, I don't know about you, but for me, my music background, like is highly varied, mm -hmm. like highly varied. Um, but uh, I think that's the thing I struggle with now. It's just like, trying to find a, a, a source to where I can hear the music I want to hear, which I mean, yeah, you know, I, we, we have Pandora. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that helps, but then you kind of get stuck on those same few channels and then like you, you heard their 25 song playlist. Right. And, thing. and so I, I don't know, for me, I guess it didn't, in my mind, it didn't change much because I was not really a concert goer. If I was a concert mm -hmm. goer, oh, I could see where I'd be freaking out. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I've always been like, hey, these are the songs I like. And I, and I try to, you know, listen to different newer stuff that's that's coming out. So I'm, I'm always flipping around on the radio. You know, some people are like, oh, you're so old school. You actually listen to FM. You know, I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't just get in my car and listen to whatever's, you know, on Bluetooth. And um, I, I've come to find that like when I download music, you know, like audio files or whatever, it's like a time capsule. Yeah. So I've got, like, we've got one in our house and I think it's like 2006 is just, burned into that so anytime yeah. you pick it 
play, you're like, oh, I haven't heard this in forever. <laughs> well, play, play me something that is a, a something that's like a fun memory for you. Like, where, where does it take you? Okay, so uh, th this one is just weird. It's because you'll probably recognize it. Okay. It's really out of left field, but... It's jazz. It's Chuck Maggioni. <laughs> Feels so uh, good. I will tell you that. Um, what does that I, remind you of? What does that remind you of? It reminds me of being in the back of our station wagon as a kid and like hearing that on the radio. Like as we were coming back from Laporte to wherever we lived. Yeah. Like, yeah, just hearing that song, like that totally reminds me of that. I will tell you that, yeah, John has on his uh, phone, on his stations on Pandora, he has a Chuck Mangione station. Oh, wow. A whole station. And, yeah. I mean, this is the guy who also loves like, you know, he has like Dio and like, <laughs> like Black Sabbath, like all that kind of stuff. Like, but he, yeah, that song comes on and he's like, yeah <laughs> waving around how can you not love that song i know right so that one reminds me of when my mom was dating jr because i was i was probably about the same age as you and just riding around that's what was on the radio at the time or whatever yeah but then there's always fun stuff you know just fun stuff okay <laughs> Okay, that's the thing I hate about YouTube. Is when you press <laughs> up a day prior, it goes to an ad. We'll yes, I know. That's all right. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. And now, Budweiser, the king of beers. <laughs> <laughs> Again. That's no, awesome. but okay. So, you know, this losing this guy with diamonds, I heard uh, an interview with Paul McCartney. And so the writing of that song was based on um, John Lennon's son drew a picture and called it Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I think that was the story, but Anyway, everybody always thought it was about like drugs or something crazy. Yeah. And they were like, no, actually it was about like a kid's picture like that he drew. Right. Yeah, which I was like, I love that. That's so great. So yeah, that's a great song. I don't know if this one will play too. Um... Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh chicago what a great band i mean i that that's whenever i like go to um uh alexa on uh, our our alexa i always like if i can't think of anything else to listen to i'm like alexa play chicago like, and that's, and it's just invariably like fun to listen to 24629. That's a great song. Um, what's the, uh, only the beginning. Like, only the beginning. yeah, that, I mean, fantastic music. Like it, you can't help. And then like the, the years where it was like, you know, where they were, uh, what was it in the karate kid? Yes. You're the, the Peter Cetera year. Yeah, the Peter Cetera is so, yeah, so fantastic. No, I, how can you not like Chicago? I mean, that's such a great, it's a great sound. It, it makes me think of, um, it's like Chicago and Blood, Sweat and Tears. Yeah. You know, they kind of had that big, like, brass sound, like, you know, my mom always said that my grandfather, my grandpa Ken, like, his he loved blood sweat and tears in chicago because it was like it was kind of a little bit old school kind of big band type style right, like right. yeah 
my uh, anytime I think, you know, my dad was really big into Chicago. And so like anytime oh. I, I hear that kind of stuff, that's what I think of. And oh. um, you know, what's crazy is you know, just back backtracking to um, the Beatles and stuff. I was never really into the Beatles. I didn't get into the, I started to listen to a little bit of the Beatles, but it wasn't until I was in my teen years mm-hmm. and there was kind of like a resurgence, you know, you know how everything goes in like 25 year cycles and so right. like, you know, now the kids think, oh, the hip thing is like 80s music. And we're like, this is the junk we grew up with. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is all, I'm like, they're like, oh, you know, this song? We're like, yeah, when it was a current hit and I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did the BG. Okay. So then you might, you might not recognize this. This would be, okay. Stretch, but let me see. Oh, wait, who is that? Yes, who, who does that? It's the Sex Pistols and Yes, okay, I was like, wait, why am I blanking? Yes. You know what's so crazy? This is the thing that I look at is, when you listen to this, okay, so hold on. Let's listen a little bit more to the guitars and stuff. Okay. It's not that harsh and abrasive, right? Right. It, it sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. But I remember at the time when it was, that was like, that was so, that was punk rock, you mm-hmm. know? And so yeah. when it came out, it was just so different from, you know, all the 50s and the 60s mainstream stuff, you know, so it was such a clash. But as you yeah. get older and you hear more newer, more intense, like, you know, death metal and all that kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. then you go back and listen to this, you're like, oh, well, it's really not that crazy. You know, like Kiss, you look back and you're like, oh, it's a rock ballad. I know. <laughs> you're like, it's not that abrasive at all. That was the other day, John was listening to the radio and he said something about it. He goes, do you know what band this is to Bridget? And she was like, no. And he goes, this is Kiss. And I forget what song it was. And she was like, yeah, I've heard of them. And then he goes, oh, you, you know, you know, they wear the makeup and stuff. And she goes, yeah, in um, Happy Gilmore, the grandmother wears a Kiss mask. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I forgot about that. Indeed. <laughs> so that was her reference. But yeah, no, it's true. When you look back on stuff, you're like, I mean, it was groundbreaking at the time. Sure. And, you know, I mean, I think about like the Beatles when they went through like their kind of sitar thing and like all that kind of stuff. Like, sure, but, that's all, yeah. yeah, that just seems very like, it almost seems a little antiquated now. I mean, it's still yeah, relevant, yeah. but like yeah. we kind of like we go back and now like now we back and look at it and we're kind of like, oh, it's kind of kitschy or whatever. But at the time, mm-hmm. they were like they were like pushing the envelope of like what can we do musically and all that. Yeah, yeah. So here's a here's an '80s favorite that. Okay. Any, oh, I was gonna say. Such a great oh, song. Up too long. You must <laughs> That's such a great one. I oh gosh, I haven't heard that in a I while. Remember, I remember uh, Nancy came down to visit. Nancy and Dave came down to visit us. Like I think there was a point in time when we first moved to Texas that they um, they were looking at getting um, employment down here. They were considering moving to Houston around the same time that we did. And uh, she said that she and Dave drove down, and they're like. We love this new song, and it's from this group Are you called serious? Emo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's also like, we also learned that if you put your arm out at just the right way, the wind goes down and it blows into your sleeve and it cools down your armpit. <laughs> I was like, why do I remember these random stories? I don't know. I love that those are in congruence with each other in terms of their experience driving down. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like Devo and. <laughs> armpit <air> wind <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the other thing that was cool about like when we grew up is we had this really awesome thing that came about in the middle of our you know pre-teens was 
MTV, right? Yeah, which was so huge. I mean, and I mean, I know people joke about this a lot, and but it's so, it's gone. Like, it's not the same anymore. Like, um, it was so monumental when that came out. I mean, I can remember sitting and watching, well, I, I don't have an audio clip, but one of my favorite songs in the absolute world is Time After Time by Cyndi Lauper. And yes, I love that song. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I can never stop listening to it. And I have very specific memories of watching that video on MTV. And like, that was such a big thing back then. Like, you know, you had this visual component, which we it sounds, before. yeah, we which, which sounds like ridiculous now because there's a visual component to everything now. Right. But, but that was such a big deal to watch, like, listen to a song, watch the artist do it and portray it um yeah. in their own emotions about the song like that was a that was a huge thing like it was very impactful so you remember how it was like people stopped the world they're like next monday at 8 <laughs> it will be yes. the world premiere of michael jackson's thriller yes a 15 minute video <laughs> and we're all like what are you doing? Like the world would shut down and everybody would like mm -hmm. race to the TV and you're like, come on, come on, get the popcorn. We're going to watch Michael Jackson. Yeah. I remember, I remember the first time I ever saw a music video with Michael Jackson, it was uh, Billie Jean. Mm. And like when he spun around. Was that the, the one with the lights? The sidewalk, yeah, the sidewalk yes. would light up when you touch it. And I'm like, mom, come see this new guy. And she goes, that's little Michael Jackson. And I'm like, you know this guy? <laughs> Yeah, as the aforementioned. Da, 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 da. <laughs> da, 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 da. I know. I think every time I drive drove through Gary, uh, <laughs> on my way back and forth from Michigan and Chicago, I was always like, "Dude, this was like the birthplace of like pretty amazing stuff." Um, yeah, because well, MTV too. I think like. Those, those were poignant moments in terms of, um, you know, I mean, the it was almost like watching a movie. Like yeah. it was such a big deal to to watch the videos and see that. Um, boy, yeah, that was. Okay. Uh, that we just we just happened to watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off like recently, and he turns on his TV and it's like din din din. Din -in -in -in, and it's the <laughs> opening yeah <laughs> to yeah. the mtv the of the 80, 80s with yeah the astronaut and like yeah and i was like oh i'm like it's just like throw me back exactly <laughs> just it's amazing how like it can take such a hold and you know so you know, like music just like i guess that's why do they even have jingles anymore I don't really know that we really have many jingles, do we? Like we, everything had a jingle back in the day. Not really. I will tell you that for some reason, I have no idea why, but for some, I was just telling John this morning, I had in my head the jingle from the Big Red commercial. Like, do you remember this where it's they were like- a little longer. Yeah. Time, a little, a little longer. longer. Longer, longer with big red, red, that big red freshness lasts like through it. Your fresh breast goes on and on while you chew it. Because <laughs> everyone on one on YouTube Marketing wants to hear me sing. All. Marketing doesn't work at all. <laughs> yeah. These are these are things where I feel like when I have to learn something new, I'm like, nope, that part of the brain is filled with commercial big jingles commercial. from the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> And Bugs Bunny cartoon quotes. Access to not section, right? This section <laughs> here is like Saturday Night Live quotes. This section here, like <laughs> I have no room left. That's so right. when and I'm old and muttering say, those. And that's why our kids are always like, you're so old. <laughs> you're so stuck in your ways and so old. It's like, no, that's just what the data, data peaked out. That's all I got. <laughs> Um, I, I tend to do a thing where 
in the morning when I wake up, um, when I'm first doing stuff like around the house in the morning, I uh, put on a song and just to get me going for the day. So I have a lot of songs that I'm like, this is my pick me up song for the day. So do you have a pick me up song, something that you're like, yep, this gets me going. Do you remember the 21st night of September? Down in the blues. Mm -hmm. ha, ha, hey. Party we don't know <laughs> Never was a cloudy day. <laughs> How can you not get up and dance to that song? Uh, I mean, first first wind and fire. fire. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. It's all great. So good. Um, yeah. Um, I uh, I have a couple of their albums on my phone, and that's that's a good go to. Yes, love that one. The girls even know that too. Like when we hear it somewhere else, they're like, oh, mom, it's your song. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. Like, love that. I will say um, I am a big fan of uh, like, well, I love, so I love Dolly Parton. I, it, that's oh my, God. that's my guilty pleasure. I love her. I think she is so wonderful. Like that song, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to sing again. Sorry, people watching. That's all right. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, where she sings, uh, here you come again. Ba, ba, da, ba. Yeah. Da, da, da. That's all I know. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Looking better than a body has to uh, the right to. Yeah, dun, I, dun, I, dun, dun, yeah dun, that dun. one and Islands in the Stream. I mean, yeah. I, I can't not love Islands in the Stream. Like she and Kenny Rogers, they they just, that was so perfect. That was like such a great duet. Like, yeah, so awesome. Um, yeah, so what are your other pick-me-up songs? Other pick-me-up songs, man. Um, Daughtry, Feels Like Tonight. Tonight, <laughs> then there's all those other ones, those like rock ballads. When I see you smile, smile I can change the world. world. Oh, oh. I, I can do anything. Like yeah, I'm like I'm feeling amorous. I'm gonna sing <laughs> bad English to you, baby. <laughs> do you remember um what was it miss mr mister is oh, that the, yes. uh oh god now i'm like forgetting the song <laughs> like it's not, it's not Kyrie lazy on is it no 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 uh no no uh wait not oh no that one was no yeah, it's not somebody. mr mister i oh gosh now i'm like god i yeah. feel like such an old lady so take these broken wings. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, oh crap! No, what am I thinking of? Uh, not Mr. Mister, Mister Big, Mister Big. That's what I'm thinking about. Wait, hang on, <laughs> Mister Big. Um, uh, I'm Mr. the Big. one who wants to be with you. Do you remember that song? What's this again? Mister Big. To be with oh, you. Oh, yeah. I'm the one who wants, wants to be with you. Deep, deep inside. inside. Oh, you feel it too. <laughs> Never heard it ever. <laughs> that was such, that was so huge when I was in high school. Like, that was such a big song. Like, <laughs> But yeah, that one, there's, there's a few things like that. Like if it comes on the radio, I can't turn it off. Like I'm immediately like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> I'm trying to cue this one up. Okay. Haja Goo Goo. Too shy. <laughs> yes. Hush, hush. I do I. 
Hush, hush, Okay. This is one of those ones where it's like MTV, burn that in your brain. If it wasn't for MTV, you would have made it. Period. Sorry, members of Kaja Gugu. I don't think so. <laughs> Um, I will say one of my other favorite songs uh, to get up to and get started is um, it's a it's an old one. Uh, Cece Peniston, finally, she's like uh, it's like finally it's happened to me right in front of my face. Yeah, you just cannot hide it. it. That's one that that's one that now if I put it on, like the girls will come down and they'll be like. <laughs> dancing around yeah they love that one that's a great that's a great like happy tune what how about um i mean do you ever do you ever go into like sadie saddington mode and like just listen to really depressing stuff for like a while just to like be like all right i'm down i'm just gonna listen to sad music for a while no i don't know no is the first answer. Two, okay. I would say there's one that's like, I don't, it's, so have you heard Blink 182's Miss You? Yes. Kind of dark lyrics, but it's such a catchy tune. <laughs> Where are you? The nightmare in my side, da 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 da. And I'm like, this is really, he's talking about somebody he loves a bit dead. Okay. I know. Okay. Yeah. No, I have a lot of, I, I tend to be like, I, I'll like, I have kind of a playlist of songs when I'm like, if I'm down, I'm like, all right, I just want to listen to sad stuff and go ahead and just feel bad. And so it's Wait, like, uh, is air supply in there? <laughs> oh no, but it should be. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm thinking of like, well, Counting Crows, like, a lot of their songs are like, you know, kind of uh, just sort of like on that tone of like yeah. when you're down. Um, Coldplay has a few songs like that that I kind of listen to, you know, like Fix You, things like that. Like there's a few songs there. And then um, what's the uh, Alone Again Naturally? I forget the guy who sings it. Uh, it's an old song. It's um, uh, when a little while. Wait, I think I might be able to play it here because, of course, I have it on my phone. Of course. Um, oh no, it's trying to play it through my headphones. So no. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yeah. No, it's like when a little while from now, I'm not feeling any less down. I promise myself to leave myself and oh, something like that but it's like super like so sad like and there's a point where like if I play it like the girls are like can we not listen to this like, but I I tend to go I I like to go dark sometimes and be like okay I get the feeling here like there there's a there's a sadness here and and, and I kind of just embrace it for a while. And I'm like, yep, these are sad songs. I need to listen to those for a few minutes. And then I pop out of it. And then I'm listening to like, uh, you know, Digital Underground or something like that. <laughs> like, <make> you dance. <laughs> did, I, did I ever tell you I saw them? Oh, this was one of your concerts. Yeah, uh, at the copy. At the grocery store. Uh, no, yeah, they lived with me. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no, they played at the Cubby Bear in Chicago when I lived there. And my friend Kara and I went and met some other friends there. And yeah, they did like the Humpty Dance and like all that kind of stuff. One of the best shows I've ever seen. It was a super small venue and there weren't a ton of people there. And it was so much fun. Like That's great, great, great show. Like, cool. yeah. Um, so I think what we can agree on is music is integral in our lives mm -hmm. and it can run the gamut of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Really... Well, and like you said, it's, it's a memory trigger. Yeah. So, yeah. which, which is, which is a good thing. I, I like that. So, um, thanks Ryan. This is fun. 
that's fun. Thanks for your music clips too. I should have been better prepared and add my. Well, you know, I, I was, you know, I did music. <laughs> I was a DJ on radio in college and stuff. So I've always been like, don't just sing it, but I did sing it. So you got the best of both worlds. I love it. Maybe you didn't want to hear me actually sing. No, I actually, you got me to sing. The only time I generally sing is in church. Um, and I haven't been able to do that for several months. So yeah, that's pretty go. much the only time that I ever opened my mouth for uh, vocal <laughs> efforts other than yapping people's ears off. So, but yeah, <laughs> so, so yeah, thank you so much, Ryan. No problem. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> I love it.